and we are live with this uh, first stream here on Kitchen Meta. Uh, I am Finn or Bridgeman and uh, this stream I will be showing um, gameplay from the decks that have been posted on the channel so far. Uh, if you have not been watching the channel before uh, and you do not know the rules or the decks, then I think uh, this stream will be hard to follow along to. So I would recommend uh, checking out the learn to play um, video on my channel if you don't know the rules and also the videos on the decks on my channel. Also today we will be playing with some uh, house rules that I've been playing uh, with at home over the years. So that means uh, some small changes, but in general, we're playing the classic format. Um, that is also, there's also a video about why I made those changes uh, at home uh, on my channel. Uh, you can also find that in the description. And, um, uh, but to sum it up, we have banned a card called Caught by Snape and we, uh, the unique rule only applies to your own board. Uh, but uh, without further ado, let us jump into a game. Um, and basically, I will be doing a play-by-play -play, uh, commentary and um, yeah, talking through my thought process as <laughs> I am playing the game. Uh, I have a friend who's uh, helping by being my opponent. Um, and here we have the game. Let me adjust Angelina so you can see. I am playing on a website called untap.in. And um, we're gonna start by rolling for who starts. So uh, the plan for today is that we're gonna show the um, the um, all the matchups between these four decks that have been presented on the channel so far. Um, and yeah, if you have uh, questions in the chat, uh, I will try to answer them. Um, all right, so I rolled highest, so I'm going to be the starting player. Do, 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 do. So we draw our starting hand of seven cards. So uh, these, this is the Angelina deck uh, that I showed on the channel, and the other is the uh, Ron Weasley character deck. Uh, with this a Angelina deck, we get an extra action before our turn if we have a match in play. So I'm going to... We want to get one rolling as early as possible, uh, and we got one on in our starting hand. So let's play a Quidditch action for our uh, first um, Quidditch le lesson as our first action, and then a match as our second one. So we can start getting those extra actions, and then we pass back to him. Now, uh, I think uh, the Angelina deck might be the weakest one today, but we'll see. Uh, if we get lucky, then perhaps we can do some really nice things with the deck. Um, so he drew an extra card uh, with an action, so that means he does not have uh, the characters that he needs, uh, Ginny uh, and, and Seamus specifically. Uh, okay, so... Uh, we got a Hufflepuff match on our draw, and uh, now we're in a bit of a pickle. Uh, we would have liked to play this first, but now we can't play it because there's already a match in play. So uh, we can play a lesson and we can play the Quidditch pitch, and we have a third action because of Angelina. So we could also play uh, Searching for the Snitch. Um, so yeah, let's let's try to do that. So. We play Lesson, uh, we play the Quidditch pitch, which is a location that lowers the uh, power requirement of all Quidditch spells by two. And then we play Searching for the Snitch to get... Uh, actually, <laughs> let's not do that. <laughs> now we shouldn't have showed him that, but uh, let's just draw for our last action because maybe we'll want to get something specific next turn with it and might as well see what we draw first. Okay, and now we pass back to him. <clears throat> so we might actually have a chance in this game because he's having a slow start. Um, now, him playing the charms, I think, means that he's trying to get to an amount of power where he can play chocolate frogs, um, which is a, is a spell that requires one charms power. There we go. Um, 
and that will be his first action and it allows his, him to get a wizard or a witch from his deck which of course will be Ginny Weasley because that will start his entire draw engine <laughs> and, okay and he's passing to us so we draw for the turn uh foul that is good uh it's a spell that deals four damage and our opponent gets one fewer action next turn um so now we can we can start playing some stuff and we have three things that we can play this turn now i guess we'll we will basically just be trying to deal a lot of damage to him um so uh so that we can complete the match and, and win the game so let's start by playing a lesson uh, we'll we'll keep uh, this turn flexible, so we will save search uh, searching for the snitch for later, and our second action will be biased commentary, so we will deal uh, five extra damage with the next spell, and then foul is going to deal nine instead of four. So now he should take nine damage, and I'm going to mark our progress on this match. There we go. Okay, so now he's only going to have uh, one action unless he gains extra actions on his turn. So he could use Ginny, Ginny now to uh, get an extra card when he draws. So the draw is of course really good with Ginny, but um, you have to be a little bit careful because if you draw a lot of cards, you know, that is also your hit points. So uh, you can get too low on life sometimes. So his first action will be Seamus, and then he's going to use Seamus to get an extra action. So this uh, turn he will have had two actions instead of the one that we thought he was going to have after filed. Uh, okay, he's getting rid of Dobby's help and Gringotts Volky. He, he definitely doesn't need those at the moment. They require quite a bit of power. And third action, McGonagall. So against us, uh, her she's not that great because uh, she, we don't play adventures in this deck uh, she provides one power but um, he doesn't really need that symbol but I think mainly she provides a power and Ginny uh, gets an extra card from her so he's passed back to us and we draw for the turn um, I think I think here we still want to draw we want to keep this searching for the snitch flexible because because we're not completing any Hufflepuff matches this game, unfortunately, we don't have actions, uh, access to a huge amount of cards. So I think it's better to save the searching for the snitch for a good moment. And we, we still need more power. So if we draw into lessons, that's okay. Ooh, this, this is actually pretty good power play. So uh, if, if there's a match in play, uh, this allows us to do seven damage to our opponent. So now second action can be, can be uh, a Quidditch lesson. And our third will be this power play. So we're going to gain uh, seven points of progress on this three month long match. <laughs> we have 14 damage to go to win this match. Um, and yeah, we're out of action, so we pass back to him. But he's he's getting low on uh, cards in the deck. Uh, if, if we complete this match, uh, if we deal 14 more and complete this match, then he he's running out of cards. He does have healing cards in the deck, though, so he can he can try to uh, play it safe and get a Madame Pomfrey out to heal himself. Um, yeah, I guess uh, now he's just thinking. Uh, there is a thing that we kind of want to watch out for here. Uh, if he gets to four power, oh, maybe he's going to do it. Uh, he can play Hover Charm, which can return the three month long match to our hand, which means uh, all of our progress on the match will be reset. Maybe that's what he's going for now. Oh, no, actually, he's playing a one shop. So that's another location. That means we have to get rid of our location. So I'm, I'm ditching the Quidditch pitch now. Um, and this doubles the power that his charms provide. So he's getting closer to being able to pull off his combo. And uh, OK, and he's going to use Snape to heal. Um, that seems wise. <laughs> He's getting Fat Lady, three Venomous Tentacular Juice. Uh, this is one of the win conditions in the deck, so he really needs that. Uh, Marcus Flint, okay. 
let's see what else he picks. He can pick. Uh, he can uh, put seven cards back with Snape's ability. And Snape also provides uh, power. So we have no way of interacting with him um, except Fouled. Fouled can give him one less action and of course we can deal damage to him, but we can't disrupt what he's doing. And his only means of disrupting us is playing Hover Charm. So in this matchup, it's it's very much a race who, about who can deal the damage first. Okay, so now it's finally us. So we, we draw our card for the turn. And we get fouled, which is really nice. Um, so I think still, um, I think still we want to draw here. Because if we search with search for the snitch for a spell that we want to draw, then we lower the odds that we're going to draw it later. So I think we'll we'll just start by drawing. Uh, Quidditch lesson. I think we need to draw again another Quidditch lesson so our, our most ex oh actually I'm, I'm, I'm making some big mistakes here I, I totally forgot that he played a one shop so probably probably I should have searched for a Quidditch pitch I was still in my mind we were still at uh, six power basically because Quidditch pitch essentially provides us two power uh, so that's a that's a big mistake but okay, let's use our third action to play Fouled and deal four damage to him. And that gives us four progress. And at least these lessons should not be useless. Uh, we can still, we still need more power. And if we do play another Quidditch pitch, because he's drawing so many cards, I feel it's kind of likely that he, um, he might have another one to get rid of our pitch, uh, <laughs> a Quidditch pitch again. All right, so now he's thinking, I believe. But uh, definitely, uh, if if we're not gonna get the Quidditch pitch in that situation, uh, situation, it's it's definitely better to just play the lesson. There's no reason to use an action to draw a lesson card when we have a card that we know we want to put in play. So <laughs> let's see if that mistake costs us the game. Uh, okay, so he's playing a Charms as his first action. Another Charms. Uh, maybe he forgot that he that he lost an action. Let me see. Yeah, yeah, he's gonna use um, Seamus to get that extra action. He just did it out of order. Getting rid of uh, Snape that he can't use and and Filch that's not useful in this matchup. Okay, so <laughs> hopefully we can survive one more turn because maybe then we can still win the game. Uh, so we got a Quidditch lesson. Okay. Um, yeah, we have we have some problems here because uh, I kind of want to get a Quidditch pitch out to get rid of the one shop but I, I don't think that's the way I think we need to get ourselves closer to winning this match um, unfortunately I don't see a way to win it this turn without yeah no there's, there's no way to win it this turn um, so I think Um, I'm not sure. We need to deal damage. I think we can we can search for a fouled and set up a play where we play spiral dive next turn maybe and win the match. I'm trying to think. So then we'll be at 24. He goes to 21. And then we would need one more power. We have three cards. I think we'll have enough cards to win the match and then win the game. So we're going to play Searching for the Snitch. Find a foul from our deck. And we're, we're going to play it right away as well. So 
So hopefully that means that he, I, th I think that means he cannot kill us next turn. I'm trying to count. So if he has two actions and he has both Dobby's help and Venom's tentacular juice, then we have, we're, we're going to have four cards. We're going to draw 10 and then we're going to draw 28. So we're only drawing 38 cards and we have 43 cards in the deck. So, so we survive. Uh, we play a Quidditch lesson and it's back to him. So next turn, we're going to draw our mandatory, puts us at four cards. And if our match stays in play, we can draw two, play Spiral Dive and deal the six um, to then win the match and hopefully win the game. Now, if he if he heals here, then, then that's a problem. Um, he's drawing with Ginny, though. If we can... Yeah. If he if he plays Madame Pomfrey here, we might be in trouble because then there it's really hard to uh, get um, get in range to actually win the game. So uh, yeah, we we only have this one damage dealing spell right now. Oof. Okay, this this is really bad news. So he returns. He he plays this hover charm and returns the three month long match to our hand. So now we're extremely far away from winning the match. And uh, probably we're gonna lose this game now, uh, but we'll try again. Um, there, the the one card that okay, so this is really bad. He's also playing Madame Pomfrey and healing himself. I mean, we're not gonna give up though. We're gonna uh, play a match again, and and hopefully um, he he doesn't have what he needs to kill us yet. So he's shuffling back Hover Charm, Vault Key, Vault Key, um, Hannah Abbott makes sense i guess uh let's let's we can look at his discard pile perhaps oh i guess we can't oh no here it is uh see like if if he's missing the the combo pieces that he needs yeah there was uh two dobby's help in here so i think he's missing one of those and he's shuffling them back um all right so I guess he's he probably he's still missing the cards he needs to kill us, which is good news. Means that maybe maybe we can still do this. So now we still wanna wanna calculate here. Um, we drew searching for the snitch, and we can do some fancy things. Um, we can play another Quidditch lesson, get to six power, uh, play the match because we only have two actions this turn. Then we could next turn play searching for the snitch and get catch the snitch, which is a spell that lets us win the match. But um, that would still not be enough. But maybe it would put him at a low enough amount of cards. I'm not sure. Yeah, and, and again, uh, if anything, um, if you have any questions about the game, the matchup, then uh, please uh, post a comment. Or if the <laughs> let me know if the sound is good and stuff. Okay, so he he drew six cards, so he's down to twenty two cards again. Yeah, and then. He might be really close to having the kill combo assembled in his hand now. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yep. That is enough. So this makes us draw. He, he discarded to get the extra action. He play, uh, played Dobby's help and another Dobby's help. That means we draw 10 cards from each and then we, we draw twice that and we die. So that's that's good game. Well played by him. So we lost our, our first game. And in the second game, I believe we decided that uh, I'm going to play Fred and George. Yes, exactly. Um, so we're playing this adventure deck now. Oh. Uh, 
Okay, there we go. And he's he's gonna play the mechanical uh, deck that was posted on the channel. All right, uh, and we're gonna I guess roll the die again to see who starts. So I rolled ten, he rolled three. So <laughs> okay, I guess I start again. Uh, last last game uh, starting was not enough, but uh, it is a big advantage to start in this game. So we don't get to draw on our first turn here. Um, and first, okay. Uh, well, yeah, I think we wanna we wanna play this uh, letters from no one uh, right away, because um, that that sets him back a couple of cards, and. If we want, if we can, we want to be able uh, to bait him to use his uh, ability on Mechanical early. Because um, if he doesn't have that, then our Through the Arcs become really powerful. So we're going to play Letters from No One as our first action by using Fred and George. Uh, basically, they, they let us put an action, uh, just pay one action to put an adventure into play instead of two. So we're passing to him. And uh, this Letters from No One, if you remember from the video, uh, it's, it means he can only use actions to draw cards and he can solve it by discarding five. And if he does, then he gets to draw two cards if he wants to. So this is preventing him from playing lessons as well. So it's really something that you, you have to solve. You, you really can't leave it alone. So he um, he drew his card for the turn and okay, so he's deciding to solve letters from no one by discarding five cards. Um, okay, let's see what he's getting rid of. Some expensive cards and two lessons. So I will actually three lessons. So I figure he drew a lot of lesson cards uh so maybe we're yeah so we made it made him lose some cards but yeah we didn't make him lose actions though he can still play the two cards first turn okay so now we draw the mandatory uh, mandatory card um yeah we just have we really have no option except playing our lessons so we just do that and then we pass to him <clears throat> yes so we did not manage to bait him to use the ability but he did lose net three cards so i still think it's okay the big problem in this matchup is that uh, we have no real way of getting rid of creatures except playing hover charm to return them to his hand and then to play something like escaping the dursleys uh, to force him to discard his hand but other than that, once the creatures are on the board, uh, they become quite problematic. Okay, so now he has the power to play Dobby's Disappearance, uh, which, yeah, it lets him return a card to our hand, and then he gains an action back. So it's just a hover charm, but you also get one action back. Really good card. Uh, oh, okay, and he's doing it on another lesson as well. Yeah, so I called this card the, the the most powerful spell card in the game. And as you can see, there's there's good reason for that. Okay, so last action, he just plays another le uh, lesson. But we're we're okay with this. Um, oh, all right. Well, he pushed our lessons back, so let's just play some lessons again. And we pass back to him. So we have a card advantage. But of course, he has he has uh, an uh, he has uh, a head start in terms of power, so he could start playing some good cards now. So he's playing Lost Notes to get rid of our Charms lesson, which kind of sucks because it means we can't play Charms cards now. But then again, we don't have any Charms card cards in our hand, so I guess it's fine for now. And he's using the second action to to draw a card. A uh, bit of a bad order there. Usually, you want to draw first and then you you play the card. Okay, now we have something we can uh, <laughs> we can play this through the arc to force him to uh, use mechanical basically, because this stops him from from playing spells. So let's let's get it on the board just to force him to to use that. 
and then we pass. So if if uh, you don't remember this one, this is an adventure that prevents our opponents from playing spell cards, and uh, to solve it, they need to skip four actions. So anytime you're s just solving this, um, it is it, it just like it ruins your game. Uh, so yeah, yeah, he's gonna use McGonagall. It's just too much time. Spending two turns to solve an adventure is just too much time. So he's just playing his cards. But if we draw more of them now, then we can start doing stuff. So he just played two, um, two lessons. Um, actually, I'm not sure why, why he used McGonagall then. He could, he could wait, but it doesn't matter that much. But the fact that we could now play another through the arc before he plays a spell means that that's a mistake. Uh, you want to use it before you use your spells. Before then, there's no real reason to, to get rid of it. Yeah, actually, he just wrote me and said the same thing. So, yeah, it's a bit of a mistake. But... Um... Oh, actually... Did we just forget to use one of our actions? Yeah, <laughs> I, I I forgot to use one of my actions. Because uh, playing the sandstone gargoyle, that's that's only one action. So uh, this one does extra damage if he doesn't have creatures, and fortunately he still has not played creatures. So maybe we can. Uh, Yeah, as long as uh, he doesn't play creatures, then this is going to be very valuable. But we're still struggling to get up to the amount of power where we can play our, our other creatures. We would really like to get Garden Gnome on the board, so we can really start annoying him. Okay, now he's at 8 power, so there's really... Okay, yeah, there's no spell he cannot play, and he's going to play this Defendo, which destroys any card on the Sansoy Gargoyle. Uh, maybe he should be destroying our lessons, because... Uh, they, yeah, they are the the thing that we need the most right now. And if we draw a lesson now, then we we're, we're suddenly in a position where we can start playing stuff again. Uh, we didn't draw a lesson, so we can only play the sandstone gargoyle in our hand. Uh, if we get to four power, we can play the other stuff. But now there's only one card we can play, so we have two actions. So we can draw for the first action. And okay, this is nice. Uh, letters from no one will stop him from playing cards. So let's, let's get it on the board. Uh, otherwise, any spell he top decks here that uh, destroys our lessons is something he will play. So, and also, of course, creatures. So we, we're we not in a rush to get out the Sandstone Gargoyle. We would rather be stopping him from, from playing cards as our first priority. All right, so he draws his card for the turn. And another card. All right, very nice. So now we draw. Okay, we finally get a lesson. Um, so here is something so nice that if we, so now we can we can play a lesson, which we will definitely do. There's really no reason not to. Um, he's gonna draw a card for his turn as a mandatory draw. Then he has to draw one more for an action, then he can solve this and get two cards. Uh, but if we play the Garden Gnome, he can only play one of those two cards that he's going to draw. And then he has to discard the other one uh, because Garden Gnome forces him to discard a card at the end of his turn. So let's put the Garden Gnome on the, on the board and make this a little uncomfortable for him. Yeah, so he draws for his first action and solves letters from no one. And also, now that we're finally at four power, we can actually start applying pressure with the creatures. Maybe it's a tough choice. He's thinking about which one he wants to use. Okay, he's, he chooses Lost Notes. And gets rid of our charms. So we're locked out of our charms cards again. 
he forgot to discard too. Okay, yo, uh, okay. So that was just a lesson card. So it didn't actually matter. Um, but yeah, let's let's apply some pressure. So we will play the Sandstone Gargoyle this turn because he still doesn't have creatures. And while he doesn't, the Sandstone Gargoyle deals three damage a turn while our other creatures only deal two damage a turn. But now uh, I'm, I'm confident uh, in this game. Uh, we're we're uh, any adventure we place is something that he has to deal with, and we're at a power amount that we can start playing our creatures. And the garden gnome will force him to discard cards, which means it's it's really uh, hard to draw. Well, you it's hard to draw actions. Uh, uh, sorry, to draw uh, four actions as your last action, because if you're at zero cards and you do that, then you have to discard the card in your hand. So I think this Garden Gnome is really going to show some value. And he agrees. So he's going to destroy our Garden Gnome with a Defendo. That makes sense because now he can use his other action to draw a card. Again, uh, he should do it in the different order. He can draw first and then decide what he wants to kill. Okay, so now we draw for the turn. And then our finally, our one of our creatures deals damage. So he's going to take three damage here. And we're also, for our actions now, we can start playing our creatures. So this black bat, when we play it, it deals two damage. And we can play a boa constrictor as our last action. So these, these deal two damage each each turn. Now we should have a, such a big advantage now that he cannot really come back. But maybe if he, I don't know, maybe if he draws just the right cards. But I, I don't really see a way now. Uh, first of all, he, he really needs to get creatures on the board. Maybe that's a way. If he could get a lot of uh, big creatures, uh, like his, his uh, capybaras that he's playing. Um, this one. That's what he wants. Oh, I missed which. Oh, he's he's uh, targeting Sandstone Gargoyle with uh, Picking on Neville. Now, Picking on Neville says that I can discard another card than the one he targets if I discard two other Sorry, I can discard two other cards to stop my card from being targeted. Um, <laughs> um, and and uh, yeah, we don't want to discard two other cards. So now we're passing back. Oh, thank you to Caster Cast in the chat. That's great to hear. OK, so for, for our turn, we, uh, we draw a Charms lesson. We don't really need lessons right now. We have enough power to play our cards. So let's let's draw an extra card. Okay, so the most useful card we can play this turn is still Ravenclaw Eagle, and we pass. I I uh, I sort of think it's unlikely the game will make a comeback, but who knows? You know, anything is possible, and it I I think it's fun just to talk about it, and there will always be you know uh, some people interested in playing it. I think, and uh, yeah. And I wanted to to share, you know, this the stuff, the thoughts that I have on the game. Okay, he's targeting the bow and the eagle with the scribbly forest. That means I have to send one to the discard pile and one to my hand. I don't know why, but I don't like snakes, so we're gonna get rid of the boa and we keep the eagle. Uh, and then he's passing back. So we draw for the turn. Actually, I, I'm not sure. Maybe he forgot to take damage from my creatures last turn, but I forgot to remind him in that case. So that's, I guess, on me. Uh, yeah, okay. So he's taking the damage. So our two axes will, will just be playing our creatures again. That's our sole focus now is... Uh... <laughs> Um, yeah, our sole focus now is just we want the creatures on the board to deal damage to him, and if we draw an adventure that can like prevent him from doing what he wants to do, then we we can play it as well. But the best thing we can do now is just play creatures, and he's he's has a he has a disadvantage. He's he's low on cards compared to us, and I guess he's thinking about what to do here. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, uh, so Caster's Cast, can you actually get the revival cards in, in physical form? I didn't know that. That's pretty cool. Is that from Make Playing Cards or something like that? Okay, so he's taking the damage. And now we drew End of Year Feast, which can return uh, adventures from our Discord pile. So <laughs> we can get it through the arc on the board to really seal the deal. This is kind of gratuitous, but we're doing it. So we're getting letters from no one back, another letters from no one, and then we're getting through the arc, which we will play with our second action. So basically this now means that he has to skip four actions just to <laughs> just to be able to play spells again. Not that the game wasn't already over, but now it's it's definitely over. It's it's a concession concession worthy at the moment. Okay, cool. So apparently you can you can print your own uh yeah, you can use make playing cards to print the new revival cards. I might uh, check it out at some point. Right now, my main focus is just to show what you know the thoughts I have on the classic game. I'm not really, you know, I don't really know what's going on with the revival sets, but that will be cool to check out at some point. Um, okay, so he's he's drawing his card for the turn. I I would not blame him if he concedes now. There there is simply no way out of this position. Yeah, yeah, he just asked me. It's, it's okay if I concede. So he, he, he will. And also I will I will take a very, very short break and then we will be uh we'll be back with uh game three. So let me give you the pause screen. All right, uh, we welcome back, everybody. Hope you're enjoying the stream so far. Uh, now I'm gonna bl be playing the um, uh, Ron Weasley against uh, the McGonagall deck. Oh, let me move Ron so that he's he's not in the way. My my face is blocking him. Um, we uh, found when we were practicing a little bit for this that this seems like a horrendous matchup for the Ron deck, but. If, if uh, you can keep Ginny untouched for a little bit, I think it's possible. Um, so let's let's hope we, we get some a good draw. So we rolled for 17, which means that we're gonna start uh, 
as the, we're going to be first player for the what's it the third time in the row so we're, we're pretty lucky today um and this is a really good starting hand um we got um do 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 uh, yeah, we got Ginny on our starting hand, so this is perfect. And I think I'm going to play Argus as my second action. Um, so the, the the reasoning there is just that uh, even though he he doesn't do anything against McGonagall, uh, we're, with Ginny we're going to draw extra cards, and if we start doing that early, it's probably going to be worth it. Um, also, if he plays Picking on Evil later on, we can sacrifice Argus Filch to save our other cards. So we're just going to play these two and pass. Um, now we have to watch out because as early as turn two, he can start playing cards like Dobby's Disappearance and, and Disrupting Ginny. Okay. Do, do, do. So, oh, we're, we're supposed to be drawing uh, two more. <laughs> really, you have to do that. You know, uh, you have to say you're doing that immediately. Uh, otherwise, you're kind of cheating. But um, <laughs> But we're playing a friendly game here. Um, okay, so this is amazing, amazing draw. Um, I think, yeah, so so what we can do here is we can play Snape as our first action. And he's a card, we need potions power to finish the game with this deck. The second, we're gonna play Seamus, and then we can use Seamus to get a third action. Um, I might, I'm wondering if I should keep the Ginny for later in case he discards it. But picking on Neville cannot discard it, uh, which is the best thing he can play next turn. So I guess we're sort of okay. Uh, he can return it to our hand with Dobby's disappearance, but yeah, this may be a mistake. But like, the worst he can do right now is is to return Ginny to our hand. So I think we're gonna get rid of Chocolate Fargs and a Ginny, and as our third action, we can just play a, a lesson card. <clears throat> All right, so it's back to him. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to so he just plays two lessons and we're going to draw five for the turn. So I guess this is sort of the dream start we were hoping for. Although once he gets to seven power, he can start doing some really bad things. Um, but okay, um, we need to. I guess. I guess we just uh, we just want to get more more characters in play. We could play chocolate for just to just to get a character. Um, because we want enough power to start playing our one shop so we can actually get to our combo. We won't be drawing more cards until we use Ginny next turn, if we're able to use her next turn. Seems we might be. So uh, let's start with Chocolate Frogs. And then we can we can find a Wizard or Witch from our deck. Now this, I'm um, actually I'm wondering, I could get uh, Quirrell to be able to return his creatures later on. That might actually be the correct play here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. At some point we assume he's gonna play play some creatures. So we get Quirrell, we play him. Uh, and our last action will be Madame Pomfrey, because then we're we're still again we're we're drawing more cards then. Oh actually I, I forgot I need to <laughs> I need to I need to actually discard cards to do this. So we, we discard um, chocolate frogs and and what? Uh, probably the, the, the... No, let's keep the lesson. Get rid of the hover charm. It's not very useful in this matchup. <clears throat> okay, so once he plays uh, two more lessons, he can start playing Scribbly for us. So he's still one turn away from royally messing with us. So since he hasn't done anything to Ginny yet, I assume we're still gonna, yeah, we're still gonna get to draw from her this turn. So we get to draw seven cards. Do -do -do. There we go. Okay, so now we're, we're actually getting some power here. This is nice. 
um, might actually be able to to distract him away from killing Ginny. I'm not sure. So what we um, yeah, I'm trying to think. We want to get to four power so we can play the one shot and then do the combo. Um, and I'm trying to figure out if we have enough stuff now. Like if we want to be using Seamus this turn. I think so. All right, yeah, I'm gonna use Seamus. So we get rid of the uh, one dub is help because we really only need. I think we only need one. And entrancing enchantments. So we have three actions now. So it's one, two, and uh, what's the third action? Another lesson. So now we're we will be at nine power if we play our one shot. Okay. <clears throat> so now he's probably going to be able to start messing with Ginny. So I might regret. Uh, wait, sorry, I forgot to use Snape. I think, yeah. So I'm gonna send all the cards in my discard pile to my deck. This is in case he, he targets Snape, then we have already healed ourselves. Okay. Um, also about uh, the game making a comeback. I mean, uh, it could be cool. Um, I think there are a lot of people just who might have never seen the game and who might be interested in, in learning what it was about and like how it works. Um, so I think there is a place to, you know, to talk about the game that there may be some interest if, if people, you know, see it. Uh, okay, so yeah, he got to 8 power and he played Def Defendo, so he got rid of our uh, Ginny, which we we're sad about. So on this turn, we can make him, let's say, let's see, we, we, we could play the one shop, but that's, that's really it. Um, so we're in a bit of a pickle here. But let's try to just put as much stuff as possible that makes things that that he wants to deal with so maybe it we we can make it so uh, <laughs> maybe we can make it so it, it hard you know it's hard enough for him to to deal with everything um so we play Ginny as our first action and on the second action what are we going to do okay yeah we could we could just discard Actually, I don't really want to discard with Seamus because if I have to discard the Dobby's help, <clears throat> then we're sort of losing the threat that we had of playing two Dobby's help. I guess we're still not threatening to do that right now. Um, so we'll be, at, we'll be at nine power and we would not kill him with the combo anyway. Um, so, okay, let's just play the one shop and not use Seamus this turn. We're going to save our cards. <clears throat> he still needs to find you know ways to get rid of Ginny. Maybe he has a bunch of those defendos lined up now, but um, we're 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 getting closer to actually being able to pull off the combo with uh, two Dobbs help and a tentacular. So he needs to keep getting rid of these cards. And I think he will, so it will be difficult for us, but 
We're getting closer. Oh, thanks, Robin. Um, so he's thinking. So maybe I don't know. Maybe um, maybe his turn is not that easy. If he starts drawing for extra cards here, we we might be able to kill next turn. I'm trying to think. Um, if he gets the six cards, then we make him draw ten, and then make no. It's still not enough. Okay, he plays the Defendo on one shop. Um, unless he has another one, that kind of seems like a mistake, because. Okay, he's playing picking on Neville. On Ginny. Um, so that means that we can get rid of two other cards in instead of Ginny being discarded, which we definitely will. I'm just thinking about which ones. So the first one will be will be Filch because, uh, he's not useful, and. I'm the other I'm thinking about is I kind of don't want to do it uh, is get rid of Snape um, but we have already used his healing effect and all the other ones actually have useful abilities I guess Quirrell well he could be useful later he, he's not really doing anything right now uh, and all the lessons, we, we kind of want them. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of Quirrell. We tr just, just try to make it as likely as possible we can set up the combo. All right, so with Ginny, this means we, we get to draw a lot of... Oh, sorry, I, I made a mistake there. I'm supposed to <laughs> draw five at once. Okay. Um, so again, I think, well, we can play this Filch just to protect against uh, picking on Neville and stuff, but we're not going to be able to win the game until we get a one shop, so we need more draw. Let's play Filch, and we'll use Seamus this time. So we'll get rid of Seamus and Seamus. And let's just let's just play the Fat Lady to get some more draw. And we can also discard her uh, to picking on Neville if he plays that. So actually, maybe this is one of those cases where where the Ron deck got enough momentum where uh, we can eventually pull off the combo. So I feel like he might be, maybe he's he's like slowly running out of, of cards to discard the cards that he wants to be discarding. All right, so he's thinking. <clears throat> yeah, if we can get the one shot now, uh, we can, yeah, we, we need a turn where we can freely play uh, do two Dobby's help and the tentacular because we never got grip hook. Maybe it was a mistake to discard the entrancing enchantments earlier because th that would have let us search for grip hook. But uh, I'm not sure. Either way, it's hard to set up the the kill because he keeps discarding the cards that we need. But um, yeah, I think this way works. We just need we need to get to the one shop. Oh, sorry, he's writing something. Oh, oh, he said we, we have an action left. That's true. <laughs> I, I just forgot. He's being attentive. I am, I'm not. Turns out it's hard to talk and, and think at the same time sometimes. <clears throat> All right, so maybe we'll make it out a lot uh, alive of, uh, of this uh, very difficult matchup, in my opinion. Uh, I think some of the other character decks, they, they have uh, more tools to uh, stop this sort of thing from, from happening. And this one might be particularly vulnerable to all this removal. Okay, so he's playing Dobby's Disappearance to put uh, Ginny back into our hand. Uh, so we're going to do that. 
that's unfortunate because we we really want that draw but you know we still have 38 cards in our deck we still haven't used madame pomfrey uh we have a big board so i think we can eventually get there we just need to be patient <clears throat> so yeah he actually still has an action left still all right so now he's he's starting to play creatures uh so we draw for the turn and of course that's that's only going to be one card then um dean thomas is nice uh we can play it uh, to get to draw three cards let's do it and okay um we use seamus of course to to get the extra action we don't need the fat lady uh, we drew draco but i i don't really want to be using him this turn so we play Ginny and the potion so now technically no we're still not <laughs> we're still not threatening game uh we need a one shop and and a lot of actions but yeah okay so he's dealing damage with the creature now for the first time so we have a little bit we have more of a clock on us now but it says we have 31 cards but with madame pomfrey it's it's really uh 43 porcupine uh so this one draws him a card when he plays it okay and he lets us uh draw for the turn so that's going to be eight cards no no disrupting of Ginny, which we we appreciate um there is an alternative way to do this which is to just play uh four more lessons i believe we have we have six power now yeah of course it's way more efficient if we can if we don't have to do that um i think again it's time to might be time to heal because Quirrell is, is useful now and we can get the one shot back. Um, yeah, let's use Madame Pomfrey. So she heals uh, 12 cards. Maybe a bit premature, but <laughs> it's, it's very hard to put the cards on the board. So I, I'd rather do it while there's still exactly 12 cards in the in the deck pretty dumb but yeah uh yeah here's another mistake i could have oh actually we can we can search for quirrell now if we want to but let's not let's let's just use seamus and and uh, start putting lessons on the board so we get rid of draco and chocolate frogs and then we'll just play three lessons so we take the five damage oh that's the wrong button there we go he got rid of a one shop we don't like it but uh we're, we're trying to do it the hard way by just playing lessons right now <clears throat> another prickly porcupine uh might yeah it might be a good idea um next turn to use this chocolate frogs too okay he's discarding the potions lesson maybe he's thinking that he can he can lock us out of potions power that would be very sad maybe we have actually we, we still have a way to get the potions power back but Okay, so we can draw uh, eight cards now in total. Ginny plus our draw for the turn. Okay, we still didn't draw one shove, so I feel very unlucky. But, <clears throat> but still, we can play Chocolate Frogs here, which I think is, uh, is nice to get uh, Quirrell. We're going to do that. Um,
and we play him and, and we use his ability. And uh, then we have to use Shameless. So we discard some cards we don't want. The Fat Lady and another Fat Lady. Um, oh yeah, we put a counter on Curl to show that we used him. There we go. Uh, okay, so last action will be do we play Grip Hook here? I think, yeah, Grip Hook makes sense. And uh, yeah, we pass back to him. <clears throat> so we have seven power. We still really need a one shop. And so uh, for those who don't remember, Grip Hook allows us to once per game uh, make him discard his hand and then draw as many cards that as were in his hand, um, which is a very nice combo when you play Dobby's Help and then Venom's, Venomous Tentacular Juice, you use Grip Hook to finish them off. Okay, he's using Dobby's Disappearance, but he's using him on a Charms Lesson, which I think is a mistake because he could disrupt Ginny, but maybe he's, he's planning on getting rid of Ginny in some other way. Because the thing is, we, we still don't have the, the one shops that we need to, to close this game out. Okay, so he's just trying to get rid of lessons. Because uh, he's playing Invisible Link, so we have to get rid of two. <clears throat> um, oh, he's passing. Okay. We do get to draw, but... We are getting very low on cards, and we, we also have used all our healing for the game. So we want to be really careful, but I think we still need to draw more cards. Otherwise, I don't think we can close this game out. Because um, we need a one-shop, that's that's for certain. So if we draw four, it's, we have 10 characters, so we, we're going to draw 10 cards. Okay, so we drew a one shop. If we play the one shop, oh, actually, oh shit, no, it's still not enough. But um, but I think yeah, with with this we should be able to set up a kill for next turn. I mean. Uh, he's he's used a lot of his useful cards. Okay. So we're definitely using Seamus, that's for sure. So let's discard the, the, the Fat Lady and Filch. And what do we do? Um, so we need at least one more lesson. So let, let's play a lesson. We play the one shop. And then what? So we are at nine now. We could play another lesson just to be safer against his shenanigans. Or we could play Harvard Charm to put the Capybara back into his hand. Um, I think preventing the damage is nice, so I'm I'm gonna target the Capybara because we maybe if we can slow the game down, we'll we'll have more actions to to um, to to get to play the cards that are in our hand now. Because now we have we have an, all the cards we need to close the game out. We just yeah, we just need to be able to play them. Oh, he's targeting our lesson cards with Scribbler Force, so one will be discarded. 
and the other one goes to our hand. Okay, that's annoying. <laughs> uh, so we draw our card for the turn. We're not going to use Ginny because then we're basically dead. Yeah, so we we need to play two more charms to be able to do anything. I think uh, the way to go here is just to play three lessons and hope that he can't get rid of enough of them. And I think it's unlikely that he can. So let's let's use Seamus. We discard uh, we could discard Seamus and Jenny. And then we, we're just going to play three lessons. And he's already used two Invisible Ink. So I think I think it's hard for him to get rid of all of them. Or, sorry, enough of them. We'll, we'll see. Um, if he... I guess, yeah, if he gets rid of two, we still can't win next turn. But uh, this Capybara is not killing us fast enough for that to be a problem yet. So he's playing a prickly porcupine, applying more pressure. So if he can get rid of two lessons now, I guess by using invisible ink or scribbly force, he can delay us for one more turn. And that that is exactly what he's doing. So this is frustrating. Um, okay, so we discard one of the lessons and put one back in hand. And then I guess he has to pass back to us. Okay, so definitely not <laughs> using Ginny, then we lose. Um, so in order to pull off the combo... Wait, actually, I can pull off the combo. I, I was talking nonsense before. Because I can play one lesson, that puts us at 9 power. So I was, I was talking nonsense. <laughs> My original train of thought was correct. If I play a lesson now, we are at 9 power. If we discard with Seamus, we then have two more actions. So we can play a Venomous tentacular juice make him draw uh, 12 cards and then he'll be at 18 cards and then we will play the other one he has to draw 36 cards and then we can also use grip hook and make him draw another 36 cards but that's just unnecessary uh so we play uh listen we use seamus um and then we're going to show him that we have the combo So finally, that was a long game, but these games get really grindy, uh, especially when it's going good for the character deck. Otherwise, the the, the uh, McGonagall closes it out very fast. And that's going to be GG. All right. Um, so the, the other matchups will be faster, don't worry. <laughs> but I, I thought this was a, a cool one to show either way. Maybe the most epic game so far yeah th so that's him drawing his entire deck okay so we go to the next one uh, let's see yep so now uh, we're playing now we're playing the mechanical deck so now you get to see it from from your perspective I was expecting McGonagall to do really well today. Uh, it was doing very well when we were practicing in like all of the matchups. Uh, this one we actually haven't tried yet. Um, yeah, this is kind of unfair. Looks like I get to start one more time. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. So uh, he can get a lot of value from, from his matches and stuff, but the fact that... Um, that we are uh, that we we can discard his matches um, is is a is a problem for him and also his lessons. Okay, yeah, he's passing to us to show that that we're starting, but we're passing back because we already did our turn. Um, <clears throat> so since we're playing like you know the original format, there is and there's it's not a tournament format. There is no mulligan, so whatever hand you get. That's that's what you have, and you you simply, uh, yeah, you just deal with what you have. Typically, that's how we 
play at home is the, the games are very fast so you know if you get a bad hand you're quickly on to the next game anyway so it's fine um okay he just played two lessons so it looks like he didn't even get a match so so far this is looking really good for us we got a picking on neville so we can play this lesson and then get rid of one of his lessons with picking on neville this sets him back a little bit and uh, we have some really high cost ones so we definitely need more lessons once we start being able to play this then it's going to go downhill for him so the question is if he can pick up speed before then he needs something like a, a hufflepuff match to get uh, and then he needs to complete it so get the actions from angelina there we go so he's using searching for the snitch now and i think he's going to search for a hufflepuff match the only problem is he can't play it this turn because he already spent his two actions so that's a bit of a problem for him yeah he gets the hufflepuff match um this one is really good if you complete it early because it gives you five cards okay so we draw for the turn so none of these we don't have enough power for any of these so we need to draw extra cards oh still expensive cards <clears throat> okay and we we're out of actions now so hopefully we'll draw lessons next turn this is a, a, a problem just like in Magic the Gathering. Sometimes you just don't draw your lessons. <coughs> uh, even though this deck is actually playing 28 lesson cards, which is a crazy high amount. It's almost half. Okay. Okay, so yeah, of course he's playing the Hufflepuff match. So he finally can start uh, getting extra actions. And also the Quidditch pitch. So essentially he's at four power now and we cannot make use of the Quidditch pitch just because we're not playing any Quidditch uh, spells. So we're drawing for the turn. That is not what we were hoping for. Things are not working out right now. <clears throat> let's, let's draw an extra card. Nope, still no lesson. We draw one more extra card. So at least in this game, uh, you can spend your time to, to draw for extra cards when you don't get lessons, but uh, losing that time is usually so bad that you know you 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 still you're still very sad about it. So I don't know. Maybe he can turn this game around because I mean, if we if we never get our um, if we never get our lessons, then uh, we can't we can't stop him from playing all of his damaging spells. Okay, and now he's playing foul. So he's, he's dealing four damage to us and we'll have one less action next turn. So that means we still won't be able to play cards next turn. So that's kind of crazy. When he's playing, ouch. So we're going to take five more damage. Um, and then we have to discard a card from our hand, which that part we don't really care about because we're not able to play the cards in our hand. But okay, let's let's get rid of uh, a Defendo, I think. It's it's probably the worst card in our hand. Or, yeah. So, he, yeah, so he won the match and drew uh, the cards. Oh, sorry, wait. We finally drew the lesson, but we were actually supposed to take five more damage because he won the match. So the, when he wins the match, he gets to draw five cards, but we also take five damage. So let's hope we still draw a lesson. <laughs> we're not, we're not doing that, but we got a card that we can actually play this turn and we only have one action because of fouled. So let's play picking on Neville and target his Quidditch pitch. Because that one is worth two power. I'm assuming he's going to discard the Quidditch pitch. There's really no reason to get rid of the lessons instead. Yeah. <clears throat> and I'll pass back to him. <clears throat> he draws for the turn. So, 
Okay, so he did he did draw another match when when completing the Hufflepuff match. So that means he's going to start gaining extra actions again. <clears throat> now, if still if we can get more lessons, then we can start disrupting him and um, we can cause some problems. Okay, looks like he searched uh, for Quidditch pitch and then he's playing it. Oh no, sorry, he can't play this turn. He 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 already used two actions. So we draw for the turn. Okay, finally, finally, we're gonna play this lesson. And let me, I'm not sure actually if, if I should discard one of his lessons or play the, the creature. Um, I think playing the creature. Okay, so I get to draw a card when I play the Prickly Porcupine. <clears throat> okay, so next turn we, we can set him back a little bit by playing these Lost Notes. But he's drawing so many cards from the Hufflepuff matches that maybe he, he can just replace them and he has three actions per turn. So we are in a bit of a, an awkward position. Though he did search for a Quidditch pitch, so I should probably take that as a hint that he did not have the power he needed. Uh, he needs to play what he wants. So maybe maybe we should have been discarding lessons. And he's thinking now. Um, yeah, if, if he completes the Hufflepuff match this turn, that means that he will not have a, um, a match in play for next turn. So he might be losing an action, but Looks like he's still going for it. Yeah, he is. Okay, shit. <laughs> this is a, this is again pretty bad. So bias commentary plus fouled means that we're taking nine damage. I uh, put the marker on the one wrong one, but we're taking nine plus the five from the Hufflepuff match. So that's fourteen damage in total. And I I think we're actually losing this game, which I I I totally didn't expect. Uh, and we're gonna have one less action for next turn. On the bright side, though. He's going to get his normal two actions because the match will be gone. And another nice thing is that, yeah, I already drew for the turn, is that our, our porcupine is finally going to deal damage to him. Okay, so I think if we just start playing these, these lost notes. Try to set him back a little bit. Um, one one thing that that makes <laughs> me feel a little bit better about not discarding his lessons is that he would have still been able to make the play that he did even if we discarded the lesson. Okay, so now he's at a low power count, at three power basically. Oh wait, wait, wait! <laughs> I just cheated. I, I only have one action. So let me let me uncheat. Oh, my discrete pile is not appearing. Um, wait, it looks like he didn't catch that. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Uh, somehow he drew another file. He's, he's, his draw has been... Uh, great when it comes to the spells. Uh, so that means we're going to take four more and we have one less action once again. So this is the fact that we, we didn't get to start playing our spells early really. Okay. And he's playing another foul. Or is he? No, no, it's the same one. Okay.
All right, it looks like everything is cleared up. So we, we draw for the turn and the porcupine deals damage. Uh, we So we're still stuck with um, on, only having one action for our turn. So we, we simply don't have enough time, um, but we're, we're gonna we're gonna try to disrupt him and see if we can buy the time that we need. But yeah, the fact that we got rolling so late just means that we we lost the game. We didn't draw enough lessons early. So <laughs> this mechanical deck is doing way worse than expected. Looks like it's gonna be be losing every game so far. And back to him. On the bright side, he's used most of his uh, good uh, spells now. So <laughs> we, we, we won't have to deal with that anymore. Okay, so we get some progress on the match. Uh, we're never going to win that match, though. There, there's no way. We still don't... Yeah, we still have to draw for extra cards here. And I kind of don't want to draw for extra cards, but... I feel like we, we we don't really have a choice, so let's try it. All right, so we play a lesson. And because that's all we can do, if we top deck a lesson next turn, we can play Scribbly Force. But in all likelihood, we will lose the game right now. But I don't know, let's see what he does. There's, there's several cards that could kill us here. Uh, a lesson plus power play, for example. He could play searching for the snitch and then spiral dive, perhaps. All right, folks, uh, I'm going to take another short break before the next game. Uh, I'll be right back. And we are back. Um, 
we have uh, at least uh, two games left. After two more games, we'll have showed all the matchup, and then I think we'll be uh, wrapping up the stream. Um, but um, still more to show. This, uh, um, yeah, this matchup. I think is very favored for the Ron deck because you can get out Argus Filch and also McGonagall on your board and they really um, make it hard for your opponents to gain any value out of adventure cards. Also, if he plays... Um, if he plays... Um, Oh wait, did I roll my die? Yeah, sorry. If, if he plays um, Letters from No One, Ginny makes it so we usually have enough cards to discard to solve it. And... Uh... Oh, hey, uh, Ilk Svorben. <laughs> Good to have you here. Um... Oh, I didn't roll the die. There we go. Sorry, sorry. I'm <laughs> I'm distracted, folk. Okay, well, it seems that we won the die roll once again. So uh, we get to start. And one thing I know is, yeah, we, of course, we're trying to get Ginny out. So let's do that. We play the fat lady and then we, we use her to search for Ginny. Where is Jenny? Here she is. And we put her in our, our hand and uh, back to him. <clears throat> so he could mess with us by playing Escaping the Dursleys, but um, if he does that, we, we we will have to discard our hand. But on the bright side, we can simply um, we can we uh, we can simply uh, search for Ginny with the reward from escaping the Dursleys. Then, okay. So he plays letters from no one and a care of magical creatures. So we draw our card for the turn. Uh, so we're not allowed to play anything before we solve this. Um, but I think we will. We want to keep McGonagall and Filch because they are they are great in this matchup. Uh, but we're gonna solve letters from no one to start with, so we don't really we we don't need these that much. So we can start with these, and the one shop is of course uh, nice. I guess we keep it for now, yeah, because we have way more lessons in our deck than we have one shops. So we discard these five, and that means we we get to draw two cards from uh, for the reward oh that is even better so uh, we got Seamus so we can play Seamus as our first action then we use him and discard two cards one two and now we still have two more actions so we can play Ginny and we can also play uh, McGonagall and McGon McGonagall can, um, is an, a thing that doesn't use an action, so you can use her to get rid of letters from no one. <clears throat> and for the viewers uh, watching, is there, is, uh, is it uh, clear and, uh, uh, you know, easy to follow. Okay, it's back to him. So he's going to play Letters from No One, but we have McGonagall to get rid of that. And we, we're going to draw five cards this turn because of Ginny. And actually, we don't, we don't necessarily need to use McGonagall here, but I think I still want to do it. Um, so we do it. Because now that that frees up our turn, so we can 
play one, two, and then we can use Seamus. Um, I think maybe we want to keep uh, Madame Pomfrey for the healing. No, screw it. We, we, we're just discarding her and Tentacular Juice and we're playing Grip Hook. So now we're going to be drawing a lot of cards. And he still can't interact with us. So now we're at a point where um, we have two power. We just need four Charms Lessons, a one shop, and then we are in combo territory. And yeah, things are looking very good now. Sandstone Gargoyle is nice though. Like it's going to deal three damage each turn. Uh, oh yeah, bigger cards. I can I can zoom in a little bit. I don't know. Is this is this better? Oh, he passed to us, so we're gonna draw eight cards. Yeah. So the sandstone gargoyle uh, it deals three damage each turn, and it only requires three, three power, which is nice. But we are so far along in in our game plan that we we don't really care that much um we can play marcus flint and make him discard cards now to make things worse for him having palm free is also really good um means even if we were to mess up somehow we we're still uh going to be able to play what we want so we use going to use Seamus and discard entrancing enchantments and uh, chocolate frogs to gain an action and then we're playing okay good <laughs> yeah it's the first time streaming so um yeah sorry about the, the the little mess ups and stuff but um hopefully i'm glad it, it it's easier to read now All right, so it's back to him. Looks like he... Oh, actually, we're supposed to take damage from the creature. He does play Letters from No One, but that one is easy to solve at this point because we, now we have so many characters. We have... How many do we actually have? We have nine, so we draw nine cards. That's eight from Ginny and then one for the turn. Um, yeah, now we can set up uh, a kill for next turn. So we we solve letters from no one. So we can discard Ginny, another Ginny. Um, I guess a vault key. No, just lessons. We have all the lessons we need. And then, yeah, then another lesson. His only means of interacting with our board is to uh, play Hover Charm anyway. So now we have three actions and we can play a one shop and two lessons and pass to him. <clears throat> Yeah, so he points out that we're going to take three damage from the, the gargoyle. Also, uh, so basically now we are threatening to play the vault key, search for Dobby's help and play Dobby's help and venomous tentacular juice and use grip hook next turn, which will be a kill. And I think it's hard for him to stop it. The only thing he can do is play Harbor Charm. But if Ginny is not gone, then we can still... Um, we can... <clears throat> Uh, we can still draw into the Dobby's help. Uh, let's see, one Dobby's help is gone from the deck. So there are still two more in the deck. Oh, and the reason that matters is because then we can, uh, we can do 
um, we, we still have enough actions to pull off the kill then. Okay, so he's basically doing that. So he's returning a one shot to our hand. <clears throat> and this means if we draw the Dobby's help, then we have enough actions to both play the one shot, then play the Dobby's help, then play the Tentacular Juice. So we're going to draw nine cards. And we got the Dobby's help. So now we just use Seamus Finnegan. Uh, we discard the frog and, sorry, uh, the vault key. Uh, so our first action will be one chop. So now we are at 10 power because we have one from Mechanical, one from Snape and uh, four times two over here with the charms. And then we play Dobby's Help, Venomous, and we shake Grip Hook to show that it's game. So this will draw him 10 cards. This draws him 20 more and then Grip Hook or actually, well, it's it's uh, 22 more, and then Grip will, will make him discard 33 cards. GG. So that that was um, uh, game. And then we we actually only have one matchup left. Oh wait. Maybe he he has an objection. We'll see what he what he says. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So that game is over. I'm going to ask him what uh, side he wants to play in the last game. Um, it's going to be Angelina Johnson against Fred and George. Let's see if we win the die roll again. Oh, we got a five. Um, so I think this is a favorite matchup because uh, he has no easy way to get rid of our through the arc. He needs to use actions to uh, get through it. Oh, he actually gets to start this time. So I'm going to pass to him. Uh, we draw a starting hand. Oh, whoops. Um, yeah, so he has to use actions uh, to to skip actions to to get through 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 the arc, but he um, he does have extra actions from the matches, so maybe that's not a huge problem. Um, yes, yeah, so we draw for the turn. Uh, I think it makes sense here to start with letter letters from no one because we can always play through the arc later. So we play the letters from no one and care of magical creatures and pass. <clears throat> oh yeah, I haven't moved this out of the way. So my head is still my head is still in the way. That's better. Okay. So he's drawing uh, for the turn. I'm going to guess he's going to start by solving the letters from no one in hopes of drawing into a match that he can play. That is what he's doing. So I'm going to discard it and then we'll see what he, he discards. Quidditch, Quidditch pitch, bias commentary, ouch, and a power play. So, so he gets to draw two cards as a reward. If he still doesn't have a match, then he's in really bad shape but maybe he got one. Okay, so, so he's going to use his first action to, to search for a match. Um, <laughs> the, the deck, the character deck is crazy, yeah. Uh, 
Yes, I am. I am Bridgman. <laughs> um, yeah, that that is, um, you know, my second account that my guests get to play with. Oh, uh, yeah, he he accidentally searched out the wrong match, so he, he redid it and now he got the Hufflepuff match, which is the one that he he wants to play. Uh, but this works, yeah. So he has to spend both of his actions, but he finally got a match into play. And uh, oh, yeah, uh, sorry, I didn't notice he passed to us. Um, so we got a sandstone gargoyle. Um, so I think and now we, we play the through the arc to stop him from playing spell cards. And then we just play a lesson. So now he will have to start skipping actions, which is, you know, great for us. And there is no no easy way to get through this. You, you just have to use the actions, but at least it's not as bad as a normal deck. A normal deck, you would spend two turns. Um, okay, he's skipping three actions. But with the Angelina deck, you can skip three. And then next turn you can skip one, have it be solved, and then you have two actions that you can actually spend. So that's way less bad than it normally is. Uh, skipping the Dursleys, we don't really need it right now. Uh, we have another through the arc. So we could play the through the uh, the uh, other through the arc because we are Fred and George. Um, but uh, yeah, so Fred and George, they, they let us play an adventure even if we already have one, but we have to discard the old one. But I think we want to make use of that last skip uh, we can just put creatures on the board in the meantime and start um, dealing damage with Sandstone Gargoyle. And I think that could actually make it so we are the one that win the match. And that probably probably will also win us the game. So let's play the Sandstone Gargoyle and yeah, get that damage rolling. Because <clears throat> there is no way for him now to, uh, s uh, to, to win this match. Uh, because he has to spend one action to get rid of through the arc. And in two actions, he can't both achieve enough power and play the spells he needs to win this match. So that's that's going to be over. And also, I'm, I'm planning on this being the, the last game of the stream. So if you have any questions about you know what you've seen in the stream so far, then ask them now uh, or, or later. Uh, <laughs> But um, um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to try to answer any questions before, before I end the stream. OK, so first action, we play another through the arc, which basically wins us the game. And then we play a second Sandstone Gargoyle. And these are going to be absolutely great, uh, dealing three damage each. Uh, because he doesn't have creatures in his deck. So yeah, he skips three. Our gargoyles uh, are going to win us the match. Which means he not only does he take the six from the gargoyles, uh, he also takes five damage from the match and we get to draw five cards. <clears throat> so this is devastating for him. And there it's gone. And then we can play, we can play another gargoyle for our first. Oh, actually we drew another, this is crazy. So we drew all of the gargoyles within the first 70 cards and he can't get rid of any of them. So this is going to be 12 damage a turn. And we pass back to him. <coughs> all right, so he's skipping an action to get rid of through the arc. Plays a Quidditch lesson. All right, yeah, so this is this is already game over. So he's going to take 12 damage from the Gargoyles. And I think it doesn't matter much what I do now. Um, we'll definitely win, but let's play a Black Bat to speed things up. 
<laughs> and I'll take a small moment to just get some water. So he's starting by playing, uh, pulling up. So he gets to draw two and deal two to me. So I have to discard two here. <clears throat> um, so, oh, and he's playing another one. So now he's gonna, <laughs> now he's gonna draw uh, the rest of his deck. No, oh, sorry. He's going to draw down to 11 and then he's going to die once he passes the turn. So I draw for the turn. And he says, good game. We respond, good game. And uh, I think that's going to be going to be it in terms of games for today. As you can see, um, uh, if you're not seen the game before, I guess you might notice that it's a pretty, pretty casual game. And... Um, uh, the games go pretty quick, but there is still, you know, uh, enough depth for it to be interesting in terms of deck building. Um, since uh, there weren't any questions in chat, I'm just going to say uh, I'm, I'm happy to have done this first stream. Uh, let me know what you think. Any feedback is welcome. I, um, uh, you know, I, I still want to improve. <laughs> I'm very new to this. And uh, I want to say... Uh, oh yeah, about the upcoming streams. Uh, my, my plan for upcoming streams is probably that I'm going to be introducing uh, new decks in them, talking about the decks, and then you'll see the decks in action against each other. Um, so stay tuned for that. And uh, yeah, I hope to see you in the next one. So bye bye and thank you for watching.